Hello, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, hopefully you've seen my video on how to create your own CPU instruction set. Now, in the comments below that video, people were talking about the difference in uh, RISC versus CISC. And also there was a question about what is actually the minimum number of CPU instructions that you need. Well, would you be surprised to hear that actually you can build a general purpose CPU that's a Turing complete CPU that can run programs, you know, like it, it can sort things and it can run little, little programs to do all kinds of things with just one instruction. One instruction. Not two, three, 10, 20. For example, RISC V has 200 instructions. One instruction. Okay, now if that's got you curious and you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So this is what is known as a one instruction set computer. So like RISC is a you know, reduced instruction set computer or CISC is a complex instruction set computer. Oh, uh, this is a one instruction set computer. It's got one instruction in it and that instruction is basically subtract. It's a special form of subtract because it does something uh, with the subtraction that it does, but it's basically a subtract. Now, you might be thinking, hold on, how can you build a general purpose Turing complete CPU that can only take away two numbers? Well, let's just remember a couple of things. First of all, that if you do take, subtract a minus number from a positive number, so you get, let's say, four minus minus four, well, that's the same as an addition. So four minus minus four is eight. So with a subtraction, you actually, thrown in for free, you actually get kind of uh, addition as well. And also, if you subtract a number from itself, you get zero. So you can actually now set memory locations uh, to zero. Now, the fact that you can do those two things actually leads, is enough to actually start to build up an entire sequence that actually mimics other general purpose instructions we might do, load something from one era of memory to another area of memory, or add one onto uh, something. Now, you can actually do that all just by using this subtraction command. So let's dive in a bit deeper. Now, before we get cracking, I'd like to thank all these people here Oleg uh, Mazonka, I hope I'm pronouncing all these names right, uh, Clive Gifford, Daniel B. Uh, Christophany, uh, and the link to mainly Oleg's work and he links to these other guys' work is in the description. I didn't invent any of this stuff myself, I'm relying completely on the information that these great people have published. Okay, so obviously a one instruction set computer is the ultimate risk computer, the ultimate reduced instruction set computer, because we've reduced it so far, in fact, there's only one instruction. And obviously, because there's only one instruction, you don't need any opcodes, because every piece of data you meet can only be handled in one way. So you don't need an opcode to say, this is a load, this is a store, this is a multiply. Actually, everything happens exactly the same way, because there's only one instruction. Now, we're going to look today at this one, sublec, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Uh, it basically, there, it's one of various different solutions for uh, single instruction set computers. And basically the sub here stands for subtract. Okay, and we'll talk about the lec bit here or the lec bit here at the end uh, in a little while. It's a special form of subtraction. And the thing that's important here is it works directly on memory. There's no registers. So it doesn't say load this into register. All it can do is do subtraction between two different memory locations. And we'll look at that in a moment. So work directly on memory, no registers. So for example, if we wanted to copy a value, let's say we had a value in a one address, let's say address 100, and let's call, it had a seven in there. And let's just for easiness call it A. So we'd have to keep saying address 100. So in A, which is in address 100, there is the number seven. And we want to copy it to address 200. Let's call it uh, B, again, for convenience. And we're going to have a third location, address 150. These addresses are just uh, arbitrary at this point. Address 150, which we're going to call uh, Z or Z, depending on what part of the world you're from, which is always zero. Okay, so there are three things. There's A, there's B, and there's uh, Z. So if we uh, do B minus B, Okay, so B is equal to B minus B. You're effectively saying that in B, that's address 200, there's now going to be a zero. Now, here comes the clever part. If we say Z is equal to Z minus A, that means that Z is going to be zero, because Z is zero, minus the seven that's in A. So you end up with minus seven. And now here's another clever bit. We can say B is equal to B minus Z. Now, B is already zero. We set that up to zero up here. So you get B is equal to zero 
And what's Z? Well, it's minus seven. So it's B minus minus seven. So now we've got seven in B. So by using these three instructions, we were able to go from having B uh, seven in A's location to now seven being in uh, B's location. And then for housekeeping, you always say at the end, uh, Z is equal to Z minus Z. So that Z, that zero, that Z uh, register always returns to zero. So it's a housekeeping. So it's four instructions in total if you're including the bit of housekeeping there. And now we've just moved a value from one register, from one area of memory to another area of memory. Okay, what happens if we want to add one to a number? So let's say, for example, we want to add one to that seven that is in address 100. So in A, add one to A. Well, to do that, we need a, uh, a constant in memory, which is, we're going to call ink one. And we could put that in address 151. Okay, and it's going to contain one because we want to add one. If you wanted to add 10, you need to put 10 in here. And what you say is this, z is equal to z minus ink one. Well, of course, we know that z is zero. It's always zero. Minus ink one means that z is equal to now minus one. And now we say a is equal to a minus z. Remember, we're doing all minuses because this processor can only take away two numbers. That's all it can do. So a is equal to a minus z means a is equal to seven minus minus one, which gives us eight. And then, of course, we can do z is equal to z minus z for some housekeeping to return z to zero. And notice the ink one does not change. It's just used there as a constant so that we can do the mathematics. So look at that. By using uh, these two instructions and, and three, if you include the housekeeping, we can add one to a number. So you can see, actually, it's quite possible to build up instructions just by using uh, the minus uh, subtraction command. Now, I said this was a special subtraction command. It's a little bit different than just plain subtraction. The full command is subtract branch less than or equal to zero. So that's why it's this sub sublec. That's how I'm pronouncing it. And so what that means, if the result of the subtraction is less than one, so zero or lower, minus one, minus two, whatever, then you branch to a specific address. And this allows us here, by including the branch inside of the subtraction, it now effectively allows us to do compares because you can subtract two numbers. If they are z uh, zero, then of course they are equal. If they are less than zero, then we also now have less than and greater than for doing our comparison. And if you don't care about the result of the subtraction, then just branch to the next instruction. So this is a clever thing. The CPU will always move to the next instruction, but because every instruction is also a branch instruction, you can say, well, if it was less than zero, branch to the next instruction. And if it was greater than zero, branch to the next instruction. That way, the CPU will continue the next instruction regardless of the subtraction results. Okay, that's the principles of doing it, but now you can actually turn those principles into some machine code instructions. So let's have a look at that. So there's no opcode. So in the machine code, you just specify A, B, and the address. So there's just three things you specify, the place, what you take, where you're doing the subtraction, what you're subtracting from it, and the address to jump to if it's less than zero. So this subtracts the value of memory in A from the contents of the memory in B, and it will store the result in B. So B here, we cut, it becomes B is equal to B minus whatever is specified here in A, and if it's less than zero after the subtraction, it will jump to the address, which could be the next instruction, or it could be somewhere else in memory, because that's how you want to write the program. So if we look at some machine code here, if we just specify three, four, six, that subtracts the value of memory at address three, so we'll go to address three, find out what's in there, and it will subtract it from the contents of whatever is in address four. So this isn't doing four minus three. This is doing whatever is in address four gets whatever is in address three subtracted from it. Works directly on memory. Doesn't work on registers, I said earlier on. And then it branches to address six. That's the six here if the result is less than or equal to zero. So here's a little working uh, example. At address zero, we've got three, four, six three bytes there. And then at address three, we've got seven, seven, seven. And at address six, we've got three, four, zero. So the CPU will start by running this instruction and it's only doing a subtraction. What does it do? Three, four, six means uh, get from address four. Well, here's, it says address four. Well, if this is address three, that's this one here, then address four is this middle one. So get from address four, a seven. Okay, so that's what we got. And take away from it what is in address three. Here's the three. And of course, in address three, we have a seven. So you get seven minus seven, which is equal to zero, which means now the memory address three here gets converted into this 707. And then because it was zero or less, it jumps to six. And that's this instruction here. It jumps to this six here to 
do the next instruction, jumped over the 777s and does this next instruction here. Okay, so now it's jumped to six, that's three, four, zero here. Notice that the three on the th uh, address number four is now a zero. So three, four, zero, we take the zero from address four, that's this one here, and it will take away seven, which is what is at address three, and therefore you get minus seven. So now address three is seven minus seven, seven, and then it jumps to zero. That's what we got, this jump to zero. It goes back up here, and it will just keep doing that. In fact, all it will do is keep subtracting seven from this uh, block here of memory, and that's the machine code. So to actually get this CPU to work, if you just had those numbers in the memory addresses, that that's exactly how it would start working. Now obviously writing machine code is pretty hard, so there is an assembler available that can actually help in this process just a little bit. For example, it can keep a track of addresses, so automatically you can say jump to the next instruction. If you want it to, you can define constants and strings in memory, like we had ink one, like we have the zero, okay? You can use things like semicolons to make the instructions don't all have to be on separate lines. Here is a very quick example of the assembler. We won't go into it now. If there is interest in another video, if a lot of people uh, wanna see it, I will go through how that all works, but that all translates to those three uh, uh, bytes of um, instructions that we saw uh, a moment ago. And this one will print out hello world. Notice down here at the bottom is this hello world as a defined string. We've also got Z as a zero there. There's also a minus one for changing some pointers. So that all lot works uh, and produces that uh, uh, machine code. And more than that, there's also a kind of a high level language similar to C that can actually compile down to the assembly and then from the assembly uh, into the machine code. And here I've taken a pretty standard C program. It does a bubble sort. Okay, there's, this here is a bit more uh, ugly because you can't define a constant array, but if I define an array of seven, I can put four, 65, two, 30, minus 31, zero, 99, and 83 in there. And then by running this program, it will convert the C into assembly language. It will then convert the assembly language into actually just those opcodes that can only do subtraction on them, and the, the program will run. Okay, so let's have a look at it in theory. Let's see it running in practice. Let's go over to a computer and actually have a look at this running. It's demo time. Okay, so here I am on my Raspberry Pi. Let's have a look at that bubble sort program that I showed you a moment ago. There it is there. Okay, the one I showed you in the slide. So basically it will, you can see here, it will print out uh, the list when it's unsorted and then print out the list again after it's been sorted with the call to bubble sort here. Now, there is a program which you can download from Oleg's uh, web page and it is this compiler. Uh, first of all, what we can do is we'll run it and tell it just to produce the, uh, the assembly for this. So convert it from this C type language into the assembly. And here it is, you can see that assembly which I didn't just go into too much in the uh, previously, but we can go into that if there's enough interest. But basically these are the assembly commands all based on this subtract, this subtract uh, command. And we can actually get it now to produce just the, the, the triplet of uh, information that each instruction needs. There they are. Those are all individual instructions telling it to, for example, this one will tell it to take away the contents of 9104 from the contents of 9104, which obviously is zero, and then jump to 8214, which I'm thinking is probably the next line because here it's 8217, so it's probably to the next line. And so that is setting something to zero. But we obviously, it's just a load of numbers to us at the moment. And finally, we can just run this now. Then this compiler also has the relevant uh, emulator in it, so it can compile it down to that uh, sublet commands and then also run them. So let's just fire that off and get it to do it. it will, there we go. So there we can see there is the list as we defined in that C array there, uh, unsorted, and here it is sorted using a bubble sort. And it did that using modeling uh, an emulator of a CPU that can only do one instruction subtract branch less than equal. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell notification icon. And well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.